I've always found it fascinating that when Jesus is recruiting his disciples to join him in ministry, that he uses the phrase fishers of men. If you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Of all of the different professions of the time, there was something unique about fishermen that he wanted the, the, the disciples to understand would be a framework for how they moved into discipleship. Them moving into discipleship would be very similar to how they were already functioning outside of purpose. That's one of the things that I love about God and the way that he uses every experience that we've ever had is that he says, I'm going to take what you already know and I'm going to build upon it, but this time I'm going to use it for my purpose. I'm going to take what seemingly had no purpose and use it in a way that gives it your purpose multiplication, that gives your gifts and talents impact that it would not have otherwise possessed. This is the difference between us just living our lives and doing what we can to take our gifts and talents to the next level versus partnering with God and trusting that God can do with our gifts and talents that which we could have never done. God, if I can see limitless potential for who I am, I wonder what you see when you look at the gifts and talents that you gave me. Because your thoughts are not my thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. And so as far as you can see, we serve a God who says, I can still do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask for or imagine. And so he says to the disciples, I'm going to use what you know, but I'm going to put you somewhere where I take it, modify it, and multiply it. I love this because when I think about what it means to be a disciple, I recognize that it's not about titles, it's not about fame. He doesn't say, follow me, and I'm going to make your name great, though with many of the disciples, he does. He doesn't say, follow me, and you're going to be popular, and you're going to be likable, though that does happen for many of the disciples. It gives us insight that the ultimate goal of someone who is a disciple of Jesus is not even to be someone who regularly attends church. The ultimate goal of a disciple is to be someone who masters the art of catching and gathering people who have not received the knowledge of who Jesus is and bringing them into a place where they are functioning at their optimal identity. That means a disciple doesn't need a microphone. A disciple doesn't need a platform. A disciple doesn't even need a perfect past. A disciple doesn't have to have done everything the right way. If you're looking at your life and thinking to yourself, I'm not eligible to be a disciple because of X, Y, and Z, then you have missed that the goal of being a disciple is whether or not you have the bait. The bait of God changed my life. The bait of the testimony of where you should be had it not been for God who stepped in and made a way out of no way. The greatest bait that anyone can uses the testimony of what God has done in their life. I know you want a degree. I know you want to speak in tongues. I know you want a church to endorse you. I know you want your mother to get on the same page. But if all you ever have is the testimony of who God is in your life, that is enough bait for you to become a disciple. You don't even have to have someone to lay hands on you. All you need to know is that God never took his hands off of me. I may not ever be able to say it the way Bishop Jake say it, but one thing I do know is God still gave me something to say. I don't know who you are in this room, but I hear God saying that it's time for you to unleash your tongue. Maybe you're not in this room. Maybe you're watching online, but I hear God saying there's more power in your testimony than you think there is. That your testimony doesn't need an audience. Your testimony just needs one ear. I hear God saying that you could do more with one ear than one person can do with one million because a person with one million may not have a testimony. They may have a cute song. They may have a nice body. They may have a gift and talent that eyes haven't seen, but unless they have a testimony, then they don't have any power. All of the power that God has assigned to your life is not in what you have achieved. It is not in your success. It is in the fact that God has allowed you the grace to overcome. It is in the fact that you ought to be dead somewhere. It is in the fact that you ought to be locked up. It's in the fact that you should have lost your mind. It's in, I know it's right. I 
know it. I don't even have to not understand what's happening in this room. The sound is going out because there's going to be a sound that is released in this room. Isn't it ironic that the moment I say you need to unleash your sound, that the enemy starts messing with the sound. There's something connected to what's going to happen when you start tapping into a level of breakthrough. Jesus didn't have a microphone, Dallas. We could be here all night. You know I'm already the one for this kind of job. I'm trying to let somebody know that if one can chase 1,000 and two can chase 10,000, what can you do with the testimony that God gave you? What can you do with the fact that you survived hell and came out on the other side? What can you do with the gift of God that's down on the inside of you? Your testimony. Your testimony. It's going to break the chain. Your testimony is going to make the difference. And as long as the enemy can keep you silent, then your liberation is not the only one at risk, but the liberation of the nations connected to you are also at risk. And I don't know why God gave me this message unless I believe that it is time for someone to start moving into a space of being established in who they are, not in who they want to be, not in who they used to be, but in the full picture of who they are. Yes, I used to be that. And now I'm also this. Yes, I used to do that, but I'm also doing this. And I didn't have to betray who I was to step into who I was becoming because God didn't require me to be anything other than who I am. And for some reason, I'm crazy enough to believe that he's going to make all things work together. Yes, the fact that I have a past is going to work for my future. Yes, the past that I was crazy is going to work for my destiny. Yes, the fact that I almost blew my brains out. It's going to work because there's somebody who needs to understand that suicidal thoughts are not the end. There's someone who needs to understand that depression doesn't have the final say. And no, I didn't want to go through it. But God, if you took me through it, do something with it. God, if you took me through it, I'm going to lay it down on the altar and I'll only pick it back up when you breathed on it in such a way that what was once a wound is now a weapon. Once a wound, now a weapon. Once kept me up all night, now got me up all night. Cause I got a book I gotta write to help somebody. That wasn't even in my notes, but I feel like somebody got a wound that's on the way to turning into a weapon of mass destruction. Everything that the enemy ever meant for evil, I'm gonna destroy with the very wound that should've took me out. That's a word for every wound in this room. You don't believe me? This ain't in my notes, so I don't know who you are. If you don't believe that wounds turn to weapons, let me tell you about a man named Jesus who was wounded for our transgressions. Then all of a sudden, those same wounds got put into a tomb and they should have stayed in the tomb. They should have left him dead. They should have left him powerless, but he was raised with all power in his hand. The very hand that they nailed to the cross is now the hand that is leading you and guiding you. And if you're going to let God's hand be on you, you might as well let him touch the wound. That wasn't in my notes. Not even a little bit. But there must be some wounded people in this room who are right on the precipice of stepping out of the pain of the wound and they can feel it in their body because the things that used to hurt don't quite hurt the way they used to. I used to be hurt when they walked away. I used to be hurt when they betrayed me. I used to be hurt when they talked about me. It used to be a wound, but now I understand in order to move and who God has called me to be, I may have to take a licking and keep on 
chicken. I may have to take a licking and keep on writing and keep on breathing and keep on producing and keep on praying. I believe, I believe God gave me this message because so many of us have been engaged in involuntary catch and release. Only the fishermen know what this is. There are some types of recreational fishing where you go in and you can catch the fish. You can even take a picture with the fish, but you have to release the fish. When Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, the intent is for them to catch and keep the fish, not catch and release them. And so Jesus has to spend time with them so they can master the art of catching and keeping. If we're honest, we're in this room and outside of even catching and releasing people as disciples, we catch and release a word. Caught the word. Life got hard, I released the word. I caught the good people. I caught the one who was the kind of person who I'd want to be mentored by, the kind of person who I'd want to have in my life, but I released them. It was involuntary. I wanted to keep them. I wish I had the character to do it. I wish I had the skill set to keep them. I wish I could have stayed in the job. I wish I could have stayed in the business, but for some reason, I don't have any problem catching. I just have a problem keeping. For some reason, God says to these fishermen, in order for you to really be effective, you can't just be someone who can catch an idea, who can catch a word, who can attract people. You gotta give them something that sustains them in such a way that you can also keep them. So as I was studying this message, I started to dissect this scripture, this chapter of Ephesians 6, because I recognize that the apostle Paul is on a mission to make sure that what he started in Ephesus can be maintained because he recognizes that they caught something. And if you don't nurture what you caught, you're going to lose it. If you don't nurture what you caught, you're going to lose it. You have to understand that I wasn't just in the room. I didn't just get a word that made me feel good for a minute. I caught something. And because I caught it and I want to keep it, I have to make sure that I have an environment that can keep the very thing that I caught. And that may mean that I need help and I may need tools because I've never caught something like this before. There's somebody in this room and you have caught something that no one in your family has ever caught. You've caught a revelation about what is possible you've caught a revelation about what can happen in your community you didn't just stumble into that I hear God saying I put you in a position where you could catch it I put you in a position I, that's why you had to be in that family so that you could catch that level of work ethic that's why you had to be in that family so that you could catch that level of hunger I put you in that family so that you could catch it and then be hungry to do something that would change it. Paul is writing this letter from a prison to a baby church that with any little bit of division, with any little bit of fear, could easily abort the very thing that they caught. Tonight my assignment is very simple. Tonight, my assignment is to help you dissect the steps and the tools according to this text and how you catch and keep 
what God's doing in your life. Come on, this is Bible study. I studied this text. And I, honestly, I'm like, God, everybody, anybody who's gone to church for a little bit has heard this text. I don't see why it bears any relevance to where we are now. But I heard God tell me very clearly that there is an establishing that has taken place. And in this establishing that there are people who are going to be afraid that when God establishes them that they may not be able to stay in the place where they have been established. And so they're afraid to step out. They're afraid to trust the opportunity. They're afraid to trust the revelation because they're afraid that if I trust it and I can't keep it, then I'm going to be embarrassed. But I'm here to prophesy to you tonight that God would not just allow you to catch something that he has no intention of helping you to keep. God says, if I put you in a position to catch it, I'm going to make sure that you also have the tools, the connections, the mentorship to make sure that you also keep it. I don't know who you are, but I hear God saying you need to start thinking on the level of what you caught you need to start thinking on the level of who you need to be oh God I wish I could say this the way I hear it in my head but I hear God saying that when you catch it it does feel bigger than you when you catch it it does feel like you're in over your head and I hear God saying that's okay because I'm also going to make sure that you start thinking on the level of what you caught I'm going to make sure that you start acting and communicating on the level of what you caught and you may not have it right now but if you caught it the catching of it is evidence that I'm going to help you keep it God if you let me catch it God I'm trusting that you're also oh God that's my word I don't know who you are but I'm going to say that this is my word because God's been throwing so many things in my direction and I've been looking at me and I've been looking at it and I'm like God I don't want to step into it because if I step into it and fall then maybe I won't be able to keep it and I hear God saying that I will uphold your foot with my right hand that if you order your steps I'm going to take them so I'm going to let somebody praise God off of my word because maybe if you're in this room it's your word too and I would hate for that word to pass you by so I'm going to give you 10 seconds to catch that word how do you catch that word you say God that was for me God I thank you that you're speaking to my doubt I thank you that you're speaking to my fear I thank you that you're giving me confidence for this next level I caught it I caught it I caught it.